You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today on our Total Wellness Tuesday, I want to talk a little bit about inflammation, a little bit about muscle pain, a little bit about joint pain, and a little about kind of mystery-based illnesses like fibromyalgia, brain fog, histamine-based issues, migraines, things that just kind of like seem to be sitting in the background. So one of the things is that I get to work with a lot of different people in my practice. And so because of that, I get to see all the different ways in which bioindividuality expresses itself. And bioindividuality is essentially there is no one food for every human, right? Because our bodies process these foods differently. Just like hard exercise isn't good for every person, not good for every stage of their life. And the same thing with nutritional supplements and and again, the best green juice, the best beet juice, the best whatever isn't going to be right for each individual. So we all need a starting point, that's for sure. And that's obviously what I work for with most people. And you know, that's why I have people do the detox in the first place. I love when they do the 21 day. And the reason is this, they're going back to the basics. They're going back to the foods that I list, which cause most people the least amount of issues, right? So we get to, we start with a clean slate. But then, you know, you do have to customize things if someone comes in with a true health-based issue. Meaning like, if you're in pretty good health, you're feeling pretty good, well, then you can eat a wide array, and you should, of fruits and vegetables, mainly plant-based foods, then choose your proteins, choose healthy fats like your olive oil, maybe some coconut oil, avocado is a great one. Some people do fine with ghee. You know, so there's a lot of great things to choose from. But again, if you're suffering from any inflammatory based issue right now, it's not a bad idea to do a 21 day to 30 day elimination of a particular type of food that can cause inflammation and just excruciating pain, almost like gout based pain or rheumatoid arthritis in some people. So let's talk about that right now. Here's the thing. There's a group of food called nightshades. I'm not sure if you've heard about them before. It's actually a small group of food, but they're extremely popular, right? So even though it's not that many foods, we often eat them all the time. And I'm going to go in and give you the whole list. They're part of a family called the Solanaceae family or the Solanaceae family. And what they are is, they're again, they're called nightshades. They're all plant-based food, vegetable and fruit-based foods. Some of them are herbs, but again, we're talking about plant-based kingdom foods. And most of them are actually poisonous, which means they're deadly to animals, insects, and they're deadly to humans. So there was um, a play, you, it, so the play was Macbeth, you probably heard of it before, and a lot of the poisons that they use kind of like back in the day, right, is something called belladonna. Belladonna is a nightshade, it is actually a poison, a legitimate poison, and a lot of these nightshades in general, which are poisons, do and can kill human beings. They're that powerful. So there's a small group, though, of edible nightshades, which... I guess we we can call her poisonous, but to a lower degree, right? So they contain these things... Well, they're called alkaloids. So the alkaloids are almost like a neurotoxin, almost like its own natural pesticide, which is going to keep a lot of these insects and other bugs away so they don't actually harm the vegetable, right? It's, it's literally, it's its own natural uh, bug spray. That's basically it. Very protective. And there's a lot of that in nature. Like nightshades are not the only thing with that. However, what we're finding is, is that those specific alkaloids can inflame people with a sensitive gut, meaning they can start to wipe out a lot, some of the good bacteria at least, create gut dysbiosis and trigger things like inflammatory bowel-based disease or syndrome. You can get symptoms of Crohn's, colitis, celiac, SIBO, any of those symptoms, which is basically an inflamed gut, right, can cause, uh, can be caused by this specific type of food called a nightshade. And another issue that they're finding, which I thought, I 
found this to be extremely interesting. I believe there's more research that needs to be done specifically around this, but at least in animal studies, what they're finding is there's a specific type of vitamin D, a form of vitamin D in nightshades that's very potent, that's very powerful. And the issue is, is that it prevents and doesn't allow for the proper calcium-based metabolism. So we need to be able to, to take calcium, not from our bloodstream basically, and get it into our cells, get it into our tissues. That's really important. But what happens is, at least in animals, it can block that conversion. So what happens is we get these this calcification of our tissues, like especially joint pain and rheumatoid arthritis. I actually have everyone with an autoimmune-based issue come off nightshades. It's not that big a deal. We give them plenty of other foods to eat, which you're going to see in a moment. And for some people, it makes dramatic, like dramatic relief. Recommend that for any type of inflammation-based issue. Also recommend it for autoimmune, but gout. Gout as well as another one, not just high purine-based foods, high uric acid crystal foods, high alcohol-based, you know, alcohol in general foods. So what are we saying here? We're saying that nightshades for the most part are fine for most people, right? Totally fine. But in some people, those prone to autoimmune, those prone to inflammation, probably want to be careful. And I want to give you that list now. And I want to tell you why specifically too. I'm giving you this list is because again, they're not going to affect most people, but believe it or not, they don't affect me when I eat them infrequently, but when I start to eat them frequently, they do actually affect me as well. And again, like if I start get, to get joint pain, it goes right to my thumbs. Like that's my Achilles heel. And, and it's, it's not funny, but you know, both sets of my grandparents all had autoimmune based issues. My parents had autoimmune based issues. I want to make sure because I know I'm prone to it, right? When I, I mean, I already started to get rheumatoid arthritis when I was 18 years old. So I certainly do not want to get the hand, finger, and elbow pain I was getting at that very, very young age. I want to obviously move away from that. And I've never had it since. But I test these things out. I test them out all the time. And I can tell you that for me, they're not the best foods. That's it. Can I have them every once in a while? Absolutely. It's just like when someone asked me, like, can I go? back to eating like bread and peanut butter. (laughs) And I just say to them, I said, those aren't health foods. Like those literally are not health foods, right? So eating processed grains, like eating processed wheat and all the gluten and the gliadin, which is inflammatory and mix that with the aflatoxins and the potential other processing of peanuts is, is not ideal. But, you know, can you have it every once in a while? Sure. If you're healthy, right? So I can eat these nightshade things now that I'm healthy, but only every once in a while. So let's name them. And I think you'll see that there are some important ones that you're probably, you know, that are good foods, right? They can be healthy foods, but that you might want to cut out right now if you're dealing with any type of inflammation or joint pain. And again, simply test it out. Don't change anything else in your diet except removing these things and see if you get benefit. All right. Some people really will. And that's why I want to bring this show to everyone because I'm guaranteeing each one of us. It's not always just about us, right? So uh, again, I can't always talk about the things that are just affecting me, my family, some of my practice. I want to talk about the things that we know affect many, many people. And I know that you know someone with joint pain, with fibromyalgia, with inflammation. So pass this show along to them. Pass that knowledge along to them. That's really what it's all about. Plus, you start to make correlations. You start to see that, oh, it's interesting that, yes, I don't have this particular issue, but I understand now there's a little bit more about this thing called bioindividuality. I understand now that a keto diet isn't right for everyone. A paleo diet isn't right for everyone. A, you know, green juice diet isn't right for everyone, right? We're all individuals. We all need to do what truly works best for our body with a little fine tuning. So without further ado, let's get to the list. The list really takes into account a lot of different peppers, right? That's one of the main things. So I'll give you the summary at the end. The list is banana peppers, cayenne, chili peppers, datil or datil, which I actually don't know what that is specifically. Someone else I'm sure will on the show. Eggplant, habanero, jalapenos or jalapeno peppers, paprika, pimentos, Potatoes, so potatoes of all kinds except yams and sweet potatoes because technically it's a different family, all right? So sweet peppers, not potatoes, but sweet peppers, black peppers, okay. Thai peppers, tomatillos, potatoes, so potatoes in general, and wax peppers. Now, in terms of fruits, goji berries, believe it or not, goji berries are in the nightshade family. Wolf berries, just a different name for goji berries. Gooseberries, Jerusalem cherries, pepinos, tamarillos, and tomatoes. So tomatoes is kind of the big one, right? So what are the big ones? The big ones are this, eggplant, peppers, basically of all kinds, tomatoes, 
and potatoes. So we have potatoes, tomatoes, and we have paprika as a spice. That's kind of pretty common. Eggplant and then pepper. So like bell peppers, the, all of those things absolutely are nightshades. One of the main herbs that's actually a, a really... I believe it's a super important herb. So this is one that I will use myself and quite often is ashwagandha. So I want to bring that to you because during your initial elimination, you will eliminate the the HPA herb, the adrenal-based herb, the calming herb, ashwagandha. It's an amazing herb used as an herbal adaptogen for the adrenal glands, for anti-aging, for calming that sympathetic nervous system. It works phenomenally well. So uh, again, try to lower your, your overall levels and then you can add some of these things back in. So again, you're going to experiment for yourself. Some people are okay with raw tomatoes. Some people are okay only if they're cooked, right? Some people are okay with potatoes as long as they don't eat the skin because the skin contains the majority of those alkaloids. Uh, Definitely do not eat any of the leaves or, or any of the sproutings to peppers or any of those items. Do not juice that part of it as well because again, that's where a lot of these alkaloids live as well. And lectins, and the lectins can bother people too. So I'm not going to go on and on about this. Hopefully that helped. What I want to do is bring it to you that anyone, again, with inflammation, with joint pain, with muscle pain, with migraines, with any of these mystery inflammatory based things, gout included in that as well. Pass it on to them. Use it for yourself. Do a simple 21 day to 30 day elimination. You can just eliminate the major things without, which are the peppers. And again, you can use them sometimes as needed, but do the initial elimination. And then if you get relief, well, you know, you'll eventually find your threshold just like I did, right? I could probably have them once a week, no problem. Maybe twice a week, might be pushing it. If I start to do it every day or every other day, I'm going to feel it, right? And so again, I just, I find that threshold of what works for me. And, and again, for me, not a big deal if I eliminate tomatoes for the most part in my diet. Every once in a while in the summertime, I'll enjoy um, some nice heirloom tomatoes, not a problem. For potatoes, I don't typically eat those that much. I'm going to have yams or sweet potatoes, peppers in general. I just don't typically include it. Same with eggplant as well. So it can be fairly easy, but believe me, if you're eating these, especially tomatoes and potatoes, they're going to add up. And because of that, it can actually start to calcify the tissues, calcify the joints, cause some of that pain in susceptible people. So hopefully this helped. I enjoyed bringing this topic to you because it's a little bit more refined. I like just taking all of our education levels to that next level. And that allows us then to grow. It allows us then to start making additional correlations with how all sorts of different things in life can be one person's, literally their antioxidant, their huge benefit in their life, and another person, literally their poison. And that's really what this is all about. So take care of everyone. Thank you again for tuning in to another Cabral Concept. I'll be back tomorrow. I look forward to speaking with you then. Take care. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or any practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.